dressed up as for the mic? I don't know. What are you dressed up as? I'm dressed up like you. Oh, <laughs> oh I love it. I see that collar. That is a silly outfit. But for the mic, it's choking me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that collar does get tight. Oh, I got to take it off. Okay, we're going to take it off. There you go. Oh, that's better. I can breathe. I don't know how you do that, Father Mike. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's great to have you here on this All Hallows Eve. And it's great to have our kids here and back in our church. I'm wondering, hey, do you have a song for us? Oh, you do, Miss Lori? Okay, if you will, come in front of the camera, and if you lead us in our song. Okay. Do any of you kids remember the color song? Do you remember um, Miss Margaret? It starts off with purple and blue, and then there's green, red, and white. So how you guys come up here, right? Step in front, and I will hold the, I'll hold this. There you go. Go up in front of the camera. We're not used to this in the Episcopal Church. We're not used to cameras. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hold this for you, Miss Lori. Oh, I have a terrible voice singing. Thomas is going to lead us, okay? Oh, okay. Thomas, okay, ready? Okay, there we go. Ready? Purple and blue, green, red, and white are the colors of the year. Purple and blue, green, red, and white remind us of the light. Purple and blues for preparation, white is for celebration, green is for the growing time, red is for Pentecost. Purple and blue, green, red, and white are the colors of the year. Purple and blue, green, red, and white remind us of the light. Awesome! Thank you all. Thank you all. We want you all to have a great day trick-or-treating tonight. Thank you for joining us for worship today. And thank you, kids. They've been coming to our uh, Sunday school. Thanks so much, kids. Hey, keep watching us on the Facebook Live. Oh, I love that, Charlotte. Way to go. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Take care, guys, as we stand together. Our worship continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You're invited to be seated for our readings. reading from Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab. He and his wife had two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of the wife, Naomi, and the names of her two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The names of the one, of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilian also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said her two da- to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord kindly deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, Your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. When you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. The word of the Lord.
reading from Hebrews. When, when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. The word of the Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, with all of our understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Jesus said to the man, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Our daughters are, or were, step, uh, were step students. Math, science, technology. Kim and I are both literature people, a teacher and a preacher. It's interesting, one has a degree in applied mathematics, another has a degree in pure mathematics. But if you ask them a question, what is 16 divided by 4? They cannot tell you offhand. They said, oh, that's base 10. We don't work in base 10. They use binomial and octal numbering systems. Or, if I ask them a language question, they'll say, well, I, I, I don't know that. I, I know Python or JavaScript or I know C sharp. But a simple question about grammar, they have to use their Grammarly app to be able to get the proper punctuation or to get their subject verb to agree. They know their world and the nuances and the minutia of different languages and different mathematical systems. They're into it. But ask them sort of that common sense sort of thing, things that everyone knows. It takes them a little while to, to get to it. It's sort of what's happening in our gospel today. Jesus has answered a series of trip-up questions. Questions that were meant to either trip him up or were meant to see how well he knew the Old Testament law. But this, this is a question from an attorney. A simple question. Sort of a softball. Let me toss you an easy one, Jesus. Let's see how practical your faith is. Let me see if you can take all the nuances of the Old Testament and see if you can apply them to the real life. He says, what is the greatest commandment? And we know Jesus, don't we? He hits it out of the park. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. The scribe does what a good scribe does. He sort of says, yes, I hear you. And he says, love God with your heart and with your thoughts and with all of your mind. He sort of sums up what Jesus says, and he does a good job of it. But then he said, and also, love your neighbor as one's self. It's a great little twist in the Greek. In the Greek, Jesus says to love your neighbor as yourself. The use of that word is a very personal you. As the scribe listens back, he disconnects himself from this law. And he says love one's neighbor as oneself. It's a third person. It's a disconnecting from the loving your neighbor, not as yourself, but in the third person. It's sort of saying, well, Father Mike says you're supposed to wear your mask in the church. Disconnecting myself from that statement. And I think that's why Jesus says, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You're not quite there yet because you're missing one of the most basic points of spirituality. Spirituality is not just to love God. It's to also love all that God has created. It's to be an owner of what Jesus is teaching. To take it into one's own life. To let it transform. To let us be new to be able to be the people of God, to be able to live like Jesus lived, to love like Jesus loved, and to show grace and mercy and forgiveness as Jesus did. 
to not sort of say these are just values, but these are my values. They change my life. It's exactly what's happening in our Old Testament story. We're going to now hear a few readings from the, Goth or the book of Ruth. It's a beautiful story from the Old Testament. And in that story, Ruth and Orpah marry the sons of Naomi. They go to the land of her husband. He dies. The two sons die. They're left as widows. They're vulnerable. Naomi says, you're free to go back to your households. Orpah, she says, okay, I will. I love you. We've been through a lot together, but I need to get back. And Ruth says that most beautiful line. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And where you live, I will live. She takes Naomi to herself. She takes her into her heart. And she says, we will be one as we live in this world. It's been difficult, but we'll say yes to whatever comes. You and I will be together. It reminds me of our prayer that we have had through our stewardship season as we are reflecting on that. Dog Hammershield wrote that simple prayer. For all that has been, thank you. For all that will be, yes. It takes a spiritual depth to be able to see where God is working even in the most difficult of circumstances. This last year has been so terribly difficult. And so we're saying, please, let this prayer become a part of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength to be able to find where God is at working and to allow gratitude to well up in your heart and to be able to say thank you but also to be courageous to what will be, to be able to say yes to what God is calling you to. Ruth and Naomi had no idea what was out there, and Ruth said, your God will be my God, your people will be my people, and where you go, I will go, and where you live, I will live. She committed herself to whatever was out there in the future, because she knew her God would be with them. For us, as we move forward in this parish, in this church, we courageously say thank you for a difficult year, because God never left us in this whole time. And so we take time to be able to think about specific ways. And we put it up on our clothesline. Well, it's a line of love is what we're calling it. And on one side of the stewardship card, you'll see, thank you. Take time, reflect on what it is that you are grateful for in the midst of a difficult year. It's a spiritual discipline to be able to think, I'm grateful even in the midst of difficult times. On the other side of the card, it says, yes. What I will courageously say yes to in the coming year, I open myself to what God will do but I have to trust him. And that's what we're doing as a parish. That's what we see Ruth and Naomi do. And I think our young scribe just wasn't quite ready to be able to jump in fully and to say myself and loving neighbor. And so he kept a little distance. And Jesus said, oh, you're so near. You're so near to what following me is about. To what the kingdom of God is about is to be able to hold it in your heart, for it to be a center of your life, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so we as a parish, we say for all that has been, thank you. And for all that will be, yes. Amen.
Each week in our liturgy, we say the Nicene Creed, our way of saying thank you for the teachings of the church that have been handed down. But by declaring it each week, we say yes to the claims of this creed. And so together we say the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead the light of the world to come. Amen. If you will please, if you will please, can you hear me? If you will please join me on 387 for the prayers of the people, Form 30. Father, we pray for the mission agencies and their work throughout the Anglican community, for the Episcopal Anglican Providence of Alexandria, for the life and ministry of the Diocese of Arkansas, for the ministry of St. John's Parish, and for your holy Catholic Church. Amen. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. And may be glorified by all people. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Larry, for Father Mike, for Tim, and the staff of St. John's Parish, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all politicians who govern, especially President Joe, Governors Asa, Governor Kevin, and Mayor George, and for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. There may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from this. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We also come to share your heavenly kingdom. We ask your prayers for those who are ill, shut in, and for whom we are called to intercede on our parish prayer list. B, George, Holly, Chris, Sal, Bill, Debbie, Wanda, Scott, Carl, Carlene, John, Barbara, Orland, Sheila, Dennis, Tim, Jim, Rebecca, Gray, Pat, Ron, Hester, Mike, Malcolm, Roni, Jackie, Andrea, Mike, Larry, Jim, Catherine, and Davis. We ask your prayers for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and for all serving our country in the military. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, and you're invited to add your own petitions. Father, pray for your grace to enable us to pray another day. May your grace and your peace be ours. We thank you for this bread. Oh, 
Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only with what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as we return to page 360, as we kneel together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As we stand together. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace. God's peace, God's peace, yay. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace to you, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, guys, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace, God's peace. You are invited to be seated. As you may have picked up, we are in our stewardship season, and today we have a speaker for us today from our vestry, and uh, as I was sharing uh, this prayer uh, with the vestry, and we were reflecting on it, I was touched really to my heart, soul, mind, and strength, the very depth of my soul, uh, when Millie Myers, the secretary of our vestry, answered uh, the question, and I said, I'd love for you to be able to share that uh, with the congregation if you'd be willing. And, and she said she would be, and it made my heart so happy. Thank you, Millie. So I'd like to introduce for our stewardship speaker this week, uh, Millie Myers, Secretary of our Vestry. Good morning. A few weeks ago, Father Mike presented his idea for our parish prayer during the stewardship season to your vestry. He asked each of us to ponder and reflect on the simple prayer, for all that has been, thank you, and for all that is to come, yes. At first glance, I must say it was difficult to pinpoint something to be thankful for in the past year. For you see, 2020 was the most challenging year of my life. I served as the director of nursing in a long-term care facility, and I felt a tremendous responsibility to my residents, their families, and my staff to do all that I could to ensure that they were safe during the pandemic. I worked many hours away from my family, and I was on call 24-7. And as a result, I felt so disconnected from my family, my friends, my faith, and myself. So by June, I was physically and emotionally exhausted. I recall seeing someone that I hadn't seen in a while, and they didn't recognize me. Quite honestly, I didn't recognize me either. I've always tried to be kind, 
compassionate and positive, like a little ray of sunshine. But the challenges of managing others during the pandemic had hardened my heart and brought out a side of me that I really didn't like. And I remember simply crying to God, I need you. A few months later, I received a phone call from an old friend with a golden opportunity. She was seeking a nurse with long-term care experience to serve on her team, with our main focus being improving the well-being of elderly residents in long-term care facilities. And in December, I began this journey and I must say I love it. Since then, I have reconnected with my family and my friends, and I've also spent a lot of time outdoors because this is where I experienced God the most in nature. So to revisit our simple prayer, for all that has been, thank you, and for all that is to come, yes. I am thankful to our Heavenly Father for rescuing me. I truly know that I wouldn't have jumped out of the rat race had I not faced such challenges. And yes, I will continue to serve others with kindness, compassion, and positivity. I will continue to allow God's light to shine through me and hopefully be a ray of sunshine to others. As we move into this season of stewardship, my prayer for each of you is that you embrace that simple prayer as your mantra for your life. Thank you and God's peace. from our vestry, uh, Grant Purdy for our time of announcements and a little instruction on the stewardship. Thanks, Father Mike. As he said, I am Grant Purdy from St. John's Vestry with a few announcements. We are in stewardship season, and you may have gotten this in the mail. They went out last week, and you'll get some information about the prayer that everyone's been talking about, the Dag Hammershow prayer. There's some good pictures and some information about what's been going on at St. John's. And as Father Mike said, you'll get one of these little cards to fill out. There's yes on one side and what you're thankful for on the other. I've got mine filled out, and I'm going to hang it up there in just a minute. So please fill these out and fill out the card. I just want to um, remind everybody just a few of the projects and the groups that St. John's supports or partners with. The Good Samaritan Clinic, Oxford House, Community Rescue Mission, the Sack Lunch Program, Community Clearing House, Cards for Others, The Next Step Homeless Services. And please fill out your cards and your stewardship pledges and get them back in the mail. And of course, the, your pledges also go to pay for the operating expenses of St. John's and all of our staff. And I want to also mention that you may have noticed if you're in church here today that we've removed most of the ropes and we're getting back to normal in the church, which is a great thing. The holy water, the baptismal font, is back and has water in it. You also have an acolyte for the first time in many months, now that Mike doesn't have to do this by himself. And we also have um, advancing of the elements will be brought down and the offering plates will go through the pews instead of being back in the church. So hopefully we'll be back 100% back to normal by Advent. That's the plan if the COVID numbers keep going down. Just a couple other things to mention. Let's see, the Saints Alive is planning for a Friday Christmas party in the parish hall, and that's scheduled for December the 10th. The Vino League is planning to start meeting again in December or January. Both of those, of course, depending on the COVID numbers, continuing to go down, and I think everybody is looking forward to the Vino League getting back <laughs> normal. <laughs> youth parents are encouraged to attend a youth Zoom meeting. That's this coming Sunday, November the 7th at 6 p.m. 
uh, it's in your bulletin in the printed newsletter that this is through the same Zoom link that you use for Sunday school and in that meeting they're going to discuss the Christmas pageant and the services on Christmas options and the 2020 youth program going forward. A couple of other announcements, lots going on at St. John's United Thank Offering in Gathering. You'll find the UTO boxes in the church and in the Skinner building. Hope you will count your many blessings by dropping coins in your UTO boxes every day. On November the 21st, you can place your contribution to the United Thank Offering in the collection plate. And more importantly, until this time next year, I hope you reflect on your many blessings utilizing your UTO box. And that message comes from Daryl Hendricks, the UTO chair. Also, cards for others. The holidays are approaching, and, and we have a group that collects blank um, Christmas cards that are distributed through Project Compassion to the area nursing homes. And you can get those blank Christmas cards. Um, there's a basket for that in the Skinner building. And here's my filled out card, so I'm going to hang that on the line. And I appreciate everybody's time and attention this morning. Thanks. Thank you, Grant. That was beautiful. Thank you. Today I do have one pastoral announcement. It was just a little bit over a year ago that one of our beloved members, past treasurer of our church, layman's league leader, and uh, our friend Dave Arnold died. Uh, I believe he was the first one who died from COVID in our parish. And uh, families who have lost loved ones, regardless of the ways of death, uh, during the pandemic haven't been able to gather as they normally would to be able to have a memorial service or a funeral service as they would. And so they're being able to memorialize and to remember their loved ones in little different ways. For instance, Sarah and Willis Edmiston um, had a service that was a memorial service, much like a funeral service, and everyone was invited. Um, today we have a very special remembrance for Dave Arnold, uh, his family's here on the front pew, and a tree has been planted outside, so he did a little bit of the dirty work ahead of time, um, but we will have a ceremonial planting and we will have a blessing of that tree in memory of Dave. And so after we uh, have our concluding hymn, as we make our way out to the back entry gate or back entry door, if you'll come and gather with the family, I'm going to invite them to come out with me as I, as I recess out. Um, if you'll come and gather in our memorial garden and we'll have our prayer and we'll have our blessing of that little tree that is going to grow into a beautiful tree and be a part of our uh, columbarium garden. So I invite you to continue out after the service to be able to be a part of this uh, memorial and prayer time and this blessing. And now we offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
continues after the old 100 on page 100, 361, Eucharistic Prayer A, a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death. You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the power.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly 